I've got these numbers, I've got this data, and I'm battling to understand exactly how people get their protein consumption being on a sort of plant-rich ketogenic diet. Great point. Um, and so it depends, again, on where you know what your goal is. And again, it's very important. I'm not talking about a standard ketogenic diet. Okay. Um, and as you said, you can have lipid problems, you know, all sorts of issues there. But what has worked the best? And again, I, you know, I'm agnostic. I, I'm not a nutritionist. <laughs> I just want to know what makes the biochemistry of your synapses work the best. Yes. So far, what has worked the best is to have a plant-rich, mildly ketogenic diet with appropriate periods of fasting. Here's why. You need to become insulin sensitive and you need to be able to make both ketones. What happens to us as we get over 40, for many of us, is that we lose both the ability to metabolize glucose in our brains and we lose the ability to make and utilize ketones. And the reason is because you have this insulin resistance. So literally, you can see this on a PET scan. The hallmark of Alzheimer's and pre-Alzheimer's, by the way, so you can see it coming for years, on an FDG PET scan is reduced glucose utilization in the temporal and parietal lobes. That's the hallmark. So it's showing you right away you are not metabolizing glucose appropriately. Now, the problem is because as you get this insulin resistance, the insulin is high, right? So that prevents you from making ketones. So now your brain is in an energetic emergency. You are not making, a, you're, not, you're not utilizing the glucose that you have. Your insulin is chronically high, and now you're not allowed to make ketones. So what we want to do is restore your ability to make and to utilize glucose by making you insulin sensitive and restore your ability to make ketones. What we recommend at the beginning, just take some exogenous ketones because your brain is in this energetic slump. You need them. And so, and then you get, you have appropriate periods of fasting, typically 12 to 16 hours at night. But be careful if someone is frail, you want to uh, you want to work up to that slowly, and just again, just take the exogenous ketones. The reason you don't just eat a bunch, and you're saying, "Look, hey, we're not getting enough support. Just eat a bunch." Well, the problem there is you just stay insulin resistant. So we're trying to do two things. It's a bit paradoxical. We're trying to create insulin sensitivity by having some periods of fasting and using appropriate diet, low in carbs but we're also trying to give you ketones and ultimately the ability to go back and forth uh, and be metabolically flexible because that's what's worked the best. And yes, we want to have appropriate amino acids, appropriate yeah. fats. So we typically use a high fat, good uh, intermediate uh, protein and low carb and, and very, very low simple carb a diet. Now, as you said, it, it is plant rich. So you're going to get the complex carbs. That's fine. Uh, and so and the another thing, by the way, we're running across, which is very much related, is that people are getting hypoglycemic in the middle of the night. And when you do CGM, suddenly like, oh my gosh, now you're seeing, wait a minute, I'm waking up at 3 a.m. with a glucose of 42. That's not good for your brain either. So again, we want to be able to make this system work together.